we'll take a few minutes in this video to talk about number five. It was from the 2018 AP Calc AB exam. It's a non-calculator question, and all they present us with is a pretty simple situation. Hey, here's a function f of x. Uh, in part A, they ask us to find the average rate of change of f on the interval 0 to pi. So an average rate of change is simply going to be a, a slope calculation using the endpoints of the interval that's specified. And so I need to take the difference in function values at the endpoints divided by the corresponding difference in x values. So when you do that calculation, you know, this right here uh, depends on numbers alone. Uh, so you can leave it like that if you want to simplify it a little bit. And I'm, I'm always of the mindset, if, if I can use the unit circle to get rid of a cosine of pi or a cosine of zero or something like that, I'm definitely going to go ahead and do so. And so I use my unit circle over here. I found the angle pi radians. The x coordinate's negative one. The x coordinate corresponds to cosine of that angle. And that's where I got this negative one from. And then for cosine of zero, I did the same thing. I found the angle zero radians, which plotted my point right there. The x coordinate of that point on the unit circle is one. And that corresponds to cosine of zero. Uh, and then it simplifies to this. Part B asks us to find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of the function at 3 pi by 2. So anytime you're looking for the slope of the tangent line, you just need to evaluate your derivative at the spot where you want to find the slope. And so we take the derivative of this function right here with a product rule, right? It's e to the x times cosine of x. So I have the derivative of e to the x times the original second function from the product plus the original first function from the product times the derivative of cosine. I need to evaluate that at 3 pi by 2. So I put 3 by 3 pi by 2 in place of all the x's. Again, I went a little bit further. I, I simplified because cosine of 3 pi by 2, negative sine of 3 pi by 2, those are values I can rattle off from the unit circle. So I plotted my angle 3 pi by 2 on the unit circle, recognized the x and the y coordinate of that point were 0 and negative 1. Cosine of the angle corresponds to the x coordinate, and sine of the angle corresponds to the y coordinate. And so I replaced cosine of 3 pi by 2 with 0 sine of 3 pi by 2 with negative 1. I guess what I did have to watch out for here, I had a negative already, and I was putting a negative right after it, a negative 1 right after it. So just watch out, minus the negative there. Uh, and then if you simplify, you just end up with e to the 3 pi by 2. Part C was the lengthiest part here. It asked you for the absolute minimum value of the function. Evaluated on the interval 0 to 2 pi, justify your answer. So what I used as my justification was the extreme value theorem. This function is continuous on this interval. Therefore, I'm guaranteed to get both a max and a min. So the way that I'm going to find my max and my min is I'm going to identify my candidates, which are the endpoints of the interval, as well as any critical numbers within that interval. Um, so critical numbers would be places where your derivative is equal to zero or places where your derivative is undefined. So here's my derivative copied down from part B, right? That product rule we used a few minutes ago. And I, I wanted to solve this by factoring, right? I'm setting my derivative equal to zero. I noticed I had a common factor of e to the x. So I undistributed an e to the x from both of those terms. And then I had a product between e to the x and cosine of x minus sine of x. So I set the first piece of that product equal to zero. e to the x is never going to equal zero. e to the x is always positive, so I don't get any critical numbers from the first part of this equation being set equal to zero. When I set the second part of the equation equal to zero, it's a little bit tricky because I have cosine of x minus sine of x equals zero. Well, what I noticed is I could add sine of x to the right-hand side, and then I have to answer this question, which is a little bit easier, in my opinion, to answer than, than what we had on that prior line. When is cosine of x equal to sine of x? And so what I did is I drew my unit circle, and I was trying to find locations on the unit circle between 0 and 2 pi where the x and the y coordinates were equivalent. And so I realized there was going to be a point in this first quadrant. If I had a 45, 45, 90 isosceles triangle sitting there, uh, isosceles right triangle sitting there, this x coordinate, this y coordinate, and hence cosine and sine are going to equal each other. And a 45 degree angle is going to be equivalent to pi by 4. What's tricky here is that if you go into this quadrant, x and y have opposite coordinates. If you're in this coordinate, x and y have, in this quadrant, excuse me, x and y have opposite coordinates. If you're in this quadrant, the third quadrant, x and y are both negative. So there's actually another triangle that sits down here that would have an x value 
and a y value that are equivalent to each other and so cosine and sine would be equal to each other they'd both be negative at this angle this angle is 45 degrees so that's pi by 4 radians past pi so if I add pi by 4 onto pi what I end up with is 5 pi by 4 so if my candidates are 0 to pi and then these two values I just need to compare the function value at each of them so I evaluate the function at 0 I get 1 evaluate the function at pi by 4 I get e to the pi by 4 times square root of 2 over 2 and you can use the, uh, some 36 excuse me 45 45 90 ratios or uh, some other tricks in order to determine that the cosine of pi by 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Uh, for this evaluation of the function, this is the one that we're going to go with because this is positive, this is positive. You sneak a look at this last one here, it's also positive. Cosine ends up being negative whenever we take the x coordinate uh, from the third quadrant here. And it's going to be negative square root, square root of 2 over 2. So the minimum value of this function is that one value. At, this can, at these candidates where the function value came back negative. This is the minimum. It happened at this x value. I want to see exactly what it asked here. It says find the absolute minimum, so it doesn't necessarily ask for the x value. So what has to be in your conclusion is that this is the minimum value. And then in the last part of this, last part of this is kind of weird because they start talking about this new function g. And they tell us g is differentiable and g of pi by 2 is equal to 0. And then for some reason they provide us with a graph of g prime. And what they want us to do is they want us to evaluate this limit. So x is approaching pi by 2. The function inside the limit is f of x, which we've been dealing with all problem long so far, divided by g of x, which is something that's new to part d, or state that it doesn't ex exist, justify your answer. So what I do anytime I'm trying to evaluate a limit, I, I try to evaluate the function inside the limit at the value x is approaching. Uh, now usually what happens is you get something that's indeterminate and that's exactly what happens here. When you put pi by 2 in place of the x's and f, cosine of pi by 2 is 0. Uh, and then g of pi by 2, they already told us, g of pi by 2 is 0. So we do get 0 over 0. Now L'Hopital's rule can be applied to indeterminate limits that involve 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And what L'Hopital's rule says, and this is just my little signal that I'm applying L'Hopital's rule here, L'Hopital's rule says take the rate of change of the top function within the limit. So the rate of change of the top function within the limit is the derivative of the top function. I think we've used that a few times already in number 5 here. Uh, and then take the rate of change of the bottom. So if I take the rate of change of the bottom, I guess I technically wanted to have a g prime of x here. Uh, that would be the rate of change of g of x. I've already ev tried to evaluate that at pi by 2. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with this numerator uh, in the next line here. So if I put pi by 2 in place of my x's, what do I end up with? Um, so in the numerator, I end up with this expression. And you can use the unit circle to figure out that this is 0. Cosine of pi by 2 is 0. So this term basically drops off. So what I end up with is I end up with sine of pi by 2, which is 1, times this, which is just going to be negative e to the pi by 2 in the numerator. And then what we need to use this graph for is in the denominator, we need to know what g prime of pi by 2 is. This is a graph of g prime. And at pi by 2, what value does g prime take on? 2. And there is the value of that limit.